So in this next video we're now going to take a look at the assembly drawings you guys are going to be required to produce and we're going to look at the important information that you are going to be required to include on your assembly drawings. So the first thing is in our assembly drawing you need to provide views of the assembly showing at least some portion of every different type of part used in the assembly. So there's a few bits of intricate details in this sentence. Uh, the first is you don't need to show every part just as long as you've just as long as you've shown every different type of part and you don't need to show all of a part you just need to show a portion of every part. So let's go back to this drawing from our first video and we're just going to pick a part here so let's look at part 27 which is just a nut. So the first thing you can see as is that part 27 is located on this section view here which is labeled part section CC and part 27 is the only bit of detail that provided on this part section so the sole purpose of this section is to show part 27. But section CC is this section up here. Um, one thing to note is that this is drawn on an older standard so you can see these arrows are coming away from our section line. If we were to draw these, we would rotate them 180 degrees so the tip of the arrow is on that line. Now, if you look at our projection that is coming off orthogonally over to here, you can see we've got that nut there again. And if you look down here onto our parts list, you can see that there are four nuts. Now, we have another one which you can see here. Now from all this information we can just label one and then using these other views and the symmetry of the shape we can show where the other three are. So this is an example of how we can use section views to show a part and also how we don't have to show every single part of that but as long as we show how to locate one of these nuts and then the rest we know are symmetrical. So the next thing is each different part drawn must be identified only once by a reference number. So if we refer back to the drawing we just looked at we had four nuts but we only labeled one of them. We can also look at this example here. So if we have a look at this part number eight which is two lock nuts you can see only one of them has been labelled, however only one of our two lock nuts have been identified in the drawing, but if we go down to our parts list you can see there are two of them. So we've got yeah, the total quantity here in the parts list and from our drawing we are easily able to locate both of those lock nuts. So our next point is if it is possible to assemble a device wrongly the drawing or special notes must clarify the arrangement in a way that it is not possible from the drawing to assemble the device incorrectly. First thing, if we look at these nuts again, if you think about a nut, it can go on two ways. You can put it up one way or you can rotate it 180 degrees and put it on the other way. For these ones, it doesn't matter which way we do it but if you think about some types of lock nuts they can be assembled they require to go on one way or another otherwise they can't actually be fastened on properly or they won't perform their job correctly. Uh, the other thing is we have this section spring now a spring can also be in this spring in particular can also be installed either way up and in this case it doesn't matter once again and we have a diaphragm so that can be installed either way up. Um, sometimes you might get a diaphragm that might have a special lip on it and can only be installed one particular way but this is not the case with this particular diaphragm. So for this drawing there are no special assembly instructions required. 
So while on this example there are no special notes that we need, if these nuts were particular lock nuts or we had a particular type of spring or diaphragm, we might have to add a note that says, be careful with this one, it can only be put on in a certain way, or we would have to have a special section view that shows something to show about how it's actually put on correctly. So another bit of information you might require is looking at the requirements in the assembly. So how much torque a particular bolt might need or how much gap to leave between two surfaces. So let's come back to this example here. With this part here we could use that and screw because we've got a screw here and we can use this to move the diaphragm up and down to give a particular setting. Now with our two lock nuts we can tighten them against each other to set a particular gap here or from the bottom of our thread to our spring. So we might have a requirement where we want the distance from our two nuts to be 20 millimeters plus or minus a millimeter. So important to note that this is a dimension that is only required in the assembly drawing because it's not something specific to a part, so it's not going to be in any of the detailed drawings. It's a dimension that we need to know for just when we're putting our device together. We would also include a note with this. So this is telling the person assembling it what to do. So tighten nuts eight together on the assembly so they're threading against each other so they lock into that position. And to measure this out, you could just use a ruler or something. All parts must be listed with adequate descriptions. So back to this example. If we take a look at this part number eight, the lock nut, you can see it's specified as a lock nut and it's an M12. From that is enough information that you could go out and buy a lock nut that's a size M12 and is made out of steel. One thing to note on this drawing is we have the drawing and material columns which were separate on one of our previous examples. They are now combined and the rest of our information here are in fact all from detailed drawings. So you'd refer to the detailed drawing for their full specification. Also worth noting is that they haven't included, they might not have had access to the drawing number so they haven't put the drawing number there but they've included the material. So generally when we're doing this we'll split those into two so you can have a drawing number column and then the material column.